ACF, Ohanezi, and the People's Democratic Party criticized President Muhammad Buhari as the presidency alleges a coup plot and pay the 100 million naira or risk the lives of Greenfield University students. What should the federal government do? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Kong. The presidency has alleged that some individuals in partnership with some religious leaders and foreign elements are trying to destabilize the sovereignty of the country. It warned that it would deal with any group that does anything to undermine the uh, democratically elected government of the country. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, in response, described the allegation as a resort to blackmail in the face of leadership failure. And while expressing its opinion, the Pan-Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, said the presidency is chasing shadows rather than looking for solutions to a myriad of problems facing the country. Well, joining us to discuss this is Alester Wilcox. He's a political analyst. Chris Itamunola is a legal practitioner. And Demeji Fabi is a political analyst and a member of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you for having Thank me. you very much, uh, listening audience. All right, great. Um, Thank you um, very much. I'm happy to be here. All right, great. I'm going to start with um, Mr. Itamunola. Um, you are a, a, a legal practitioner, so I'm going to pose this question to you. Um, what does the presidency mean by um, a coup plot when they say a coup plot? I mean, we, we as Nigerians have, have heard about coup plots under the military administrations, and this was a thing which um, even the president had been part of while he was in uniform. But when they say there's a plot to overthrow the government, what do you think they mean? And I mean, we know that this is an allegation of sorts. Is the presidency saying that um, pe these people that they've not necessarily mentioned their names, but pointed fingers to are capable of overthrowing a democratically elected government in a democracy? Well, when you say a coup plot, um, it's, it, it's automatically uh, portends the illegal, illegal um, takeover of a constitutionally um, elected democratic administration that is in place and backed up by the constitution and for um, a coup plot to take place and to successfully um, have legitimacy um, the implication is that section one of the of our constitution uh, which is uh, which establishes the supremacy of the constitution will automatically be suspended but uh, once there is an attempt to, pl uh, to plot a coup, what um, an illegal government or administration or the coup plotters will have to do will be automatically to suspend the, the constitution and um, by so doing come up with decrees that will legitimize um, whatever acts they are, they are doing. And simply put, that, it, that is what it means um, to, to plan a coup. I'm, I'm just curious because um, in the 21 years of our very nascent democracy, um, have you really heard any president, sitting president, um, make these sorts of allegations of a coup or a, a planned takeover? And why do you, what do you think would have necessitated this um, allegation made by the presidency, because this is not the first we're hearing of it. A few days ago, the DSS also warned that there were people who were trying to, um, you know, um, in fact, they warned that people should stop speaking negatively about the government of the day and that there were sudden plans, you know, um, on being unearthed. And now the presidency is coming out to say, well, we know we have a list of these people. What, what do you think have, must have necessitated that? This affection, this satisfaction of the people with the administration that they um, legitimately put in place 
a, 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 a government a government under a democratic setting is a government for the people, by the people, and for the people. And the essence of it is why they have put the APC-led administration is first and foremost to secure, to secure their lives and properties. In the north, you are having agitation. In the west, in the south, in the east, everywhere you are having agitation. And what the presidency, what the president ought to do is to rise up to the occasion. That, I mean, there is so much uh, dissat dissatisfaction all over the nation. And when that comes, it, it, it simply means it's your shadows. You, even if the people are dissatisfied and they express it, one thing you can't take away in an administrative setting, in, I mean, in a democratic setting, is the will of the people to make their comments. And how many people are you going to start arresting? How many people are you going to guard? Why all you need to do is to rise to the occasion, look at the north, look at the south, look at there are so much inequality, for example, in the area of appointments, in the in the area of uh, job creation, in the area of uh, uh, insecurity. I mean, you they are talking about uh, look at what they just released uh, uh, about 39 uh, students, uh, and we are not we do not know whether our ransom was paid or not, but. Whether ransom was paid or not, the most important thing is, I mean, every day you are hearing about killings, you are hearing about kidnapping, and that is not what Nigerians voted against the administration. But, but, but Mr. Terminal, like, this is not the first time in, a, in the country that we have had disaffection. In fact, Nigerians have been long before now, divided along ethnic, religious, and political lines. Yes, you, may, you might argue that we've not had it as bad as this, but could this be a premise for which a government would be screaming blue murder that they want to be overthrown by not just political leaders, they're talking about past political leaders, and they're talking about religious leaders. And this means you're talking about the, um, the Muslim leaders, you're talking about the, the Christian leaders. I mean, this is a very hefty allegation. With all due respect, it is imperative for us to go beyond the allegation um, of coup plotting. I mean, that if the presidency is, uh, is certain about that, that's why he's the president. That's why it's the presidency. For goodness sake, you can't talk without verifiable facts. If you are certain that there is an attempt to overthrow your government, first and foremost, who are these people? Go for them and take them in accordance to law. Number two, beyond going for them, the question to ask yourself is, you are put in administration for a given reason. Are you fulfilling that? The reason why the APC administration took over from the PDP-led administration is in inverted comma, the, 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 the assertion that the PDP is not doing well. And of course, there are various promises that the APC-led administration of uh, pre our President Buhari uh, asserted in order to be able, I mean, upon which, upon which premise it came into power. You, within 49 days, you are going to um, you are going to wipe out Boko Haram within a particular period. The dollar is going to be this or that and the rest of that. Of a period of almost eight years. Are you are you fulfilling that? So it's not an issue that it's not it's not the, the fact here is not that in past in the past administration there have not been challenges, but that Nigerians trusted you that you are going to give them a better life. Mm -hmm. Are you doing that? The answer okay. definitely is no. Well, of course, we're going to leave that one open-ended. But let me go to Alester Wilcox. Uh, Alester, the presidency has said that it's ready uh, to keep the country together, and I want to quote them directly. Even if it ruffles unruly feathers, they said, uh, if, uh, in the process. Now, what's happening, what we're seeing in the country, the disaffection that um, Mr. Tamanola has been making reference to, the insecurity, you know, the, the, the much disaffection that we're experiencing today. Um, does it seem that the government has been able to keep people together? Uh, and if they have, why are we at this point where we are today? Well, thank you. Uh, I, did, I, I listened to Mr. Tamanola very well. Uh, I think he's my brother. By going by name, someone I think is my brother. So I wonder if he was speaking for the PDP 
I, I think I, I just asked you a question, uh, Alesta. Let's answer answer my question, so, then I, you can speak on Itamunola. Can, can I take my question, please? Um, can I take my question? Uh, freedom of speech. Now, let me answer, please. Now, um, if you're talking about uh, a, a disaffection, I can never, I can't imagine when Nigerians have never experienced disaffection with governance. Um, this is not the first time. You made a mistake that this was the first time being alleged coup plot. This is not the first time. Uh, during the time of Obasanjo, there was an alleged for coup plot. Even the time of uh, President uh, Yaradua, when he was sick, there was an alleged attempt but coup plot. So uh, those are not things that uh, are strange to Nigerian politics. I, I don't know about disaffection because it has always been there and will always have disaffection. So, so, so long as there is struggle for power and one side of the divide uh, takes power, there will always be disaffection. Uh, it happens all over the world. Go to the UK, the, between the Labour and the, and, the, and the Conservative. Oh, go to America, Democrats and Republicans. So there will always be disaffection because we we'll see it from different angles. And so it's not unusual. Rather, maybe, and I will always say, sometimes we exaggerate situations in order to score our point, to make our points clear. Um, there has been, nobody looks at, each time we talk about this government, nobody looks at achievements. We always want to protect the country in such a bad light that nobody looks at any achievement that has been done. Rather, we use one, one incident to expand. We, we think, we, we, we speak as if Nigeria is the place nobody lives inside. Go on the street, everybody will tell you nobody lives in Nigeria. Everywhere is bad. Every corner is bad. You can't travel on the road. I travel on the road every time. Frequently, I go to Portacot by road. I come back. Thousands of cars do that. So, so some of these, these, these things are either politically motivated or overbloated out of proportion. Okay. Not to say that there are no challenges. There are challenges. The, the issue of agitation is long in our country. We've not, I can't remember the last time, through either state creation, local government creation, uh, uh, self succession it's not through the hearing self succession movement. The Biafra tried it in, seven, in, the, seven, in the 60s. Uh, the, the, uh, the Masob tried it, have been, have been on it since, uh, since, uh, since 2002 or thereabout. So it's not a new thing. Rather, right now, what is happening is based on political experiences based on North South divide, we're expanding this horizon. So it will not be out of place for people to want to uh, uh, capitalize on this over bloated, I, I call it over bloated okay. security challenges, over bloated out of proportion security risk to want to try any foul thing. And that is why there's a government in place and the government has the capacity to detect. And so they've detected and they are warning. Remember recently, just last week, uh, a very prominent, let me not mention his name, I like mentioning him, but I will not mention, a very prominent religious leader in this country, a leader of, of PFN, talked about, I mean, came on uh, and said the president should leave. Such a statement. And what is wrong, with, what is wrong with that? If somebody mm -hmm. said, these people elected the president, and if a person says, I mean, they all have rights to know. their opinion. Hold on. They what is get, wrong in me get, saying if my president cannot do what he promised, then he should honorably step down. Is that a crime? This is, this, this is a president is that, that a was crime, elected, Mr. Lester? elected Is it a crime no, it? to ask a president is who it? had no. rolled on the wings of bringing us security, what, peace, what, safety, one, employment, one, and one, fighting Boko no, Haram? What is one, wrong what, in asking that president on, to step down if he's on, unable on, to do on his what job premise? honorably? On, what is look, wrong with what, that? On what premise? No, I asked the question. Everything it's a yes wrong. or no answer. No, what is I'm wrong answering, with I'm it? I'm answering you. Let me, let me answer you. Everything is wrong because there are ways by which you can remove a president from office. There are, there are the consumer provided a way to remove a president from office. If the individual... There's a different... I'm sorry. I'm yes, so sorry. I apologize. I'm, I apologize, but I'm, I want to I wanna just you know, clear something up. There's a difference between me making a move to remove a person and me saying to you, honorably step down if you cannot do the job. The operating word is if. So there's a difference now, the between issue, asking issue, you the, to and actively and trying and to and get and you sorry. out of office. Oh, 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 you are not the one that made the statement. So, and you didn't, well, I'm trying you didn't to make you understand the sentence structure in so this I conversation. Am brought, I am the one that brought it to four. I'm the one that brought it to four. So let me expand it on it. What I'm saying is the context upon which 
you will you will wake up either on your pulpit or whatever and say president should leave the office. Now, if you have if you if you feel strongly about policies, you are free to criticize no policy is not criticize politics policies. If you feel strongly that the president cannot hold office, then you you can table a motion as an individual as a, or through a representative to the National Assembly for its impeachment. But you don't look. That is this the kind of the statements that are going on that are capitalized on this kind of thing. You, go, you don't go and put it at that level, at that level of leadership, controlling, knowing fully well that you have so many followers under their pole, and they make such statements. Those can be tantamounted to insurrection. So okay. the statements you make, how you make it, and the context you make it is very important, and so that people do not misread your statements. Okay. And, and by so doing, carry out acts that are not intended by your statement. Because at that level, you are not just talking for yourself, you are talking for a millions of other people who you are leading. So okay. it is different for me, as an right. individual, to say uh, the press should leave. And you, that controls thousands of followers, millions of followers, to make such statements in public. So these are the things that we must guard against. All if, right. if there is areas you are not satisfied, point them out. And right. I keep talking about, also point out areas that are okay, point out bad areas, then make an informed opinion. Great. Not just always bad, 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 bad. Because Thank you. you are, because maybe the, the side you supported didn't win, and it was at all times will bring down this other side. All I right. don't think we're happy All right. Here. Thank you very much. Um, let's move to B, uh, Mr. Dimeji, um, Fabi. Uh, let, 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 let me ask, because I want to pick up from where Alastair left off. At what point does criticizing any government whatsoever in power become um, a, a, a cool plot as the presidency has alleged? At what point does constructive criticism or people crying foul because they are no longer feeling safe, according to all of the people who have been coming out to speak, either asking that, you know, the banditry issue be dealt with, Boko Haram hoisting their flag in Niger state, or the kidnappings everywhere. Um, at what point does criticism become a cool plot or send vibes to the people to want to overthrow a government? Well, thank you very much and good evening, viewers. Um, let me start by saying that um, as a country, I think we've we really mixed certain things. And, then, and that thing is being honest with each other. It's, and unfortunately, the Nigerian government is not, seems Nigerian government is not being honest with the people of Nigeria. First and foremost, I'd like to say that there is no coup plot anywhere. The federal government is just chase, I mean, chasing shadows, and they know what they're doing. If it come out and tell us that, okay, we know those who are behind this, then what are you waiting for? You don't leave fire over your, your roof and go to sleep, um, uh, as far as I know. And then a lot of criticism that you see out there is a reflection of the convergence of opinion, the convergence of uh, the summit of opinion that Nigeria is gradually becoming a failed state. They are genuine criticisms. Everybody that has spoken about the presentation of Nigeria today have shown so much concern about the situation. It has never been this bad. And if a government, a responsible government, so to speak, is taking those constructive criticisms as uh, being antagonistic to the government, being an attempt to, to, to organize a coup plot, it means that that government is confused and that government is not really honest with the people. They are only afraid of their own shadows. And that's why I support the gentleman that first spoke. Nigeria is in a bad situation, and we must all agree to this. This is not about politics, because those that are being well, well, killed... But Alester disagrees with you. He's saying that you're all blowing this out of proportion. You're all making uh, a molehill, are we blowing, a, a, a are we mountain out of... Are well, 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 he, well, he, out he, of proportion? And he's saying Excuse that you all seem to be making... So, uh, Alester is saying that things are not, are not bad, and then there are good things that are happening, but we never, ever talk about those good things. So I'm wondering, as someone who's in the opposition, with, with um, due respect, with due respect, are you sure you? that you're not being biased towards Nigeria, the government? I, I live right? in Lagos. With due but respect, to the gentleman, I don't know whether he lives in another other country. Even the Lagos, he says, is living. How many people I live are in Lagos? Yes, I live in Lagos. Now, please, let us be honest with ourselves. All right, this government of President Muhammadu Buhari is 
fond of coming out to say we know this, and at the end of the day, it's not. They should have had. They should. They should be able to be. I mean, to be above board, no matter what. We are not saying they're not. They are not trying Alastair, their best. Alastair, please, can you can you exercise some decorum? Let the gentleman speak when you were speaking. Yeah, yes, yes, you, yes, yes. I I don't know why I don't know why it has to go to that extent. Now, what I'm saying is that we just have to be. The government has to be honest. Government has to be honest with Nigerians. Okay, a lot of things suggest, you know, that things are not. I supposed to be. A, many, many prominent Nigerians on daily basis are coming out to advise this government. Of recent is the former vice president of Nigeria who told them this is a time to declare war on terror. If further went to say that, go ahead and get, we call them reserves in the US or in the UK, go and get the ex-military services that Nigerians have used, that, that have used, uh, that have been used Nigerian money to train, to come back to this, you need help. But when a government is so arrogant, this is what you get. So looking for a makeshift to say that there is a coup plot somewhere, as far as I know, is, 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 is very, very ridiculous. So as far as I know, it's, it shows that the government is confused and they don't know what they want to do. Recently, the former Senate president of Nigeria I wrote the president an open letter. They should go back to that letter and do what is there. It is simple. You came on board you know, to tell us that you can handle security. I, I tell everybody who cares to listen that I personally will never forgive Mr. President you know, for failing in security. Just like I will never forget, I will never forgive the vice president you know, for the, with the way our judicial system is. Because the impression we're given was that they are S to A class to the first class student in security and judiciary and, 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 and law. So why are we having this, 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 this problem? So as far as I know, the DSS came on board and said, we know these people. Why can't you go after them and bring them to the fort? Let Nigerians see them. I will support you. I will praise the government if they're able to do that. It goes beyond coming out to tell us that we know them and you're not doing anything. That is just cheap blackmail as far as I know. And I stand with my party. Oh, this is not a, this is not a, a matter of fault, but I stand with the position of my party that this government is just chase, chasing shadows. They should wake up and do what is right for Nigerians. We are being killed on daily basis. The economy is in bad shape. So if someone out there on the national TV is telling me everything is going is going is going right, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, that that's 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 quite uh, unfortunate. Uh, let us take something for instance, a government that we all voted for. This is democracy, and Nigerians are happy that we're having democracy. You know, you said in the opening remark that we had a president who, at some point, one point or the other in this country, truncated democracy. So is it all these people that are giving credible advice and suggestions to Nigeria that are now planning coup to overturn this government? This government has lost the credibility. They have lost the respect of the people. They have lost the confidence of the people. They should sit down and have a rethink and give Nigeria the okay. kind of governance they truly desire okay. or deserve. All right. Um, I just want to go back to Mr. Tamanola. I, I, I just want to look at the weight of this statement because, of course, like the presidency said, and I want to reiterate, they would not mind ruffling unruly feathers. But I want to go back to something that Ohanese and... Um, um, Pandef said they lambasted the presidency. In fact, they said that um, this is a democracy uh, and it's not a military rule. They said that um, they were not interested in unseating anybody. In fact, they urged the president to deal with the situation in the country and leave speculation. In fact, they did say that it was embarrassing for a president um, to call former leaders, former um, political leaders, especially vice presidents and former presidents, um, that there was a word that was used, it just fails me now, more like saying that these people were angry uh, that they were not being carried along. They, they, they were given a, a name. And they're saying that this is very unruly of this government uh, to name names. In fact, they no, did not just talk about political leaders, they talked about, it means that we're talking about Khan here, we're talking about the GNI. And they're saying these people are supposed to, or are plotting, allegedly, to overthrow the government. Does it mean that every single person, every preacher, whether it's a Muslim cleric or a Christian cleric, does it mean that former President Goodluck Jonathan, former Vice President Atuku Abubakar, former President Olusha Gwabasanjo, and I mean, the list is endless, that all of these people could be ganging up against their own country, because ganging up against this government means it's a gang up against the presidency. And legally, do these people, although they've not been named, but um, if they were to be named, do they have a, a grounds to 
drag this government to court if they do not produce an evidence? The answer is definitely negative. The answer is negative. And one of the high points of a democratic setting, like I've earlier stated, is constructive criticism. And when you are criticized, the essence of it is the people who are criticizing you, the objective is that they want you to do better. That's one. And with all due respect, a cross section of the, uh, the groups that have been aforementioned were groups that supported this current administration to come into administration. I mean, would you say that Wale Shoika has criticized the administration because because of a coup plotting. I mean, you've always known Olusha Gobasanjo, our past president, at one point in time or the other, he criticized the immediate past administration and is criticizing the current one. Will it be because of coup plotting? As a matter of fact, I can tell you, any attempt by any military for a coup plot in this nation will fail because we've gone beyond that. Mm -hmm. What Mr. President is just being asked to do is to secure our lives. In terms of security, go to the north, go to Bornu State. Bornu State was one of the states that stood behind this current administration in terms against the previous administration. The issue we are talking here, with all due respect to my colleagues on the platform, is not an issue of PDP, APC, or any other party. It's our destiny. And if we fail to be truthful, to be honest and encourage Mr. President to strengthen the institutions. At the end of the day, we won't be here to, to, to witness the things that are going to happen. Okay. Nigeria is definitely degenerating in terms of the economy. What is the value of the Naira to the dollar? In terms of uh, what the well, point, we promised us there will be, uh, there will be deregulation. And at the end of the day, in spite of your deregulation, for goodness sake, where are the, where are the refineries? Well, where are the, the other things? These are questions that so are begging answers. I'm not here to criticize Mr. President. I'm not here to criticize Mr. President. The most important thing is I'm begging him. Tavala, Let him we have keep to a listen here we have to, to the constructive criticism. Nobody is going to unseat him. Okay. If he's going to be unseated, it has to be by democratic means. We hear you. Let him with all Thank due you. respect sit up. Come and address the Nigerian people and secure All right. them. We need to go. We need to go. Time is not on our side. But I want to thank you, Chrissy Tamanola, um, Lester Wilcox, and Mr. Fad. Fabi, for being part of this conversation. We appreciate you all. Unfortunately, we could not go further with this conversation, but thank you. Well, we don't have a right of response there. Eh? We don't have a right of Well, we need to take there. a short break now when we return. As regarding the abduction of the Greenfield University students, we sh should, what should the Nigerian government do in this regard? Well, Ahmed Bumi will be telling us exactly what he thinks the government should do.